beautiful area. I'm with Estancia of Uspachata, co-owner, co uh, Jeffrey Mausbach. So thank you for joining us today. And we're going to talk a little bit about this very, very unique vineyard at 2,000 meters or around 7,000 feet um, in Mendoza, Argentina. It's the highest vineyard in Mendoza, currently being uh, planted and distributed in bottles. So, Jeff. Welcome. Thanks, John. Let's, let's, Thanks for uh, coming to visit us. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. So let's talk a little about the very, very unique soils that are going on here. As you can tell, this isn't, you know, the, in the we're not in the heart of Uco Valley, so we're finding very different stuff here. And uh, let's let's see. Well, we're high up into the mountains, and so these are a very different type of soil um, based on porphyrous rock. Mm -hmm. uh, these are rocks that are igneous, which means that they were formed down at the Earth's core, and they were then brought up to the surface with the formation of the Andes. Um, and over the years, these rocks have eroded from the surrounding mountains. They have fallen down into the vineyard, and so they give us a very, very unique soil profile here at Estancia Uspajato. And um, one thing here, so we have very, very hard rock. This is some of the hardest rock in, in the world, correct? Yes, yes. This is, this is used a lot for building, you know, a lot of buildings that were that were created. All Back over in the ancient world. times, it was used by a lot of the of the royal, by Egyptians, by the Polynesians um, in in Babylonia to to. Um, build most of the royal palaces. They were usually blue back in that time and, or in that area. Um, and here they have a lot of different colors. They can be kind of this Bordeaux color or also a, a kind of copper color. They also have a lot of speckles of granite in them. Um, and one of the interesting things of how these rocks are formed here and how they then erode into the vineyard is that they're encrusted in limestone. So not only do we have these porphyrous rocks, but we have a lot of limestone uh, that is in our topsoil. Limestone is a very important viticultural mineral, let's mm -hmm. say, um, and it has a very unique uh, kind of influence on vines, on grape flavors and textures, and, and eventually on on wine styles. Absolutely. Great. And one other thing I know our viewers might not be able to notice, but a lot of sun here, blue <laughs> skies, but you know, it's very fresh outside. It's not overly bearing heat. It's sort of like a, a very high altitude, um, you know, cooler temperatures. How is that affecting the wine here? How's that affecting ripeness? That makes a very unique kind of climatic condition, a very unique microclimate here. As you mentioned, Sean, we're at almost 2,000 meters. That's 6,500 feet above sea level. So we're in a desert climate, so we have lots of sunshine. Uh, the sun is very intense because of that altitude, but also altitude brings together uh, the idea of having cool temperatures. So it's that kind of combination of very intense sunlight with very cool temperatures that gives us a very unique characteristic and personality for the fruit here. Uh, the very intense sunlight means that, for example, we are in a Malbec lot here, so our Malbec fruit will develop very thick skins. Inside of the skins, we have all the chemical components of color, aroma, flavor. They're called polyphenols. And having thicker skins means we have great concentrations of all of these elements. Exactly. So that on the one side gives us wonderfully concentrated and intense wines. Beautiful. The very cool temperatures means that the fruit retains a lot of natural acidity. And so that gives us freshness. So yeah. we have the kind of best of both worlds. You exactly. get all this great con concentration from the sun, but you get wonderful freshness balance uh, from the cool temperatures. Yeah, and not in a lot of places in the world do you get this sort of combination, right, of, of these cooler temperatures, these high sunlight. It's one of the only places in the world where you really get the best example of it. One other thing I wanted to mention is uh, in vineyards you see a lot of netting, right? Yeah. And most people uh, understand that it's for hail, but here it's a little different. So Jeff, what's what's this net mainly for here and what's some of the biggest challenges with it? So as you mentioned, Sean, this is in Mendoza usually used as hail protection, um, but here we're using it for wind protection. Because we're in such high elevations and we're at the mouth of a mountain canyon, uh, this is called the Miner's Canyon, there's a constant wind here all the time and it can get very strong. So in order to protect the delicate shoots, especially in the early times, the early period of, of uh, the growing season, we put on these nets. It helps keep the protection from the wind, keeps these very delicate, tender buds or, or shoots from breaking off. Um, and so it's an important, uh, an important aspect of caring for the vineyard throughout the growing season. Well, 
I'll uh, thank you everyone for joining us at Estancia Spachata. Thank you, Jeff, so you much. You bet, Sean. And, uh, My pleasure. Until next time. Thank you. Take care.